It's VHS X. What do you mean? All right, we're back. We're playing some Pharaoh Eddie today, or uh, the Doctor, if you will. Uh, probably one of the best cosmetics for the Doctor, for sure, man. One of the best. And uh, here we are. Now, we do have our Iron, Iron Maiden build today. We do have Darkness Revealed this time, uh, which turned out to be one of the most useless perks um, for this build. Um, so we actually swap it for uh, Ultimate Weapon later on in the video, because obviously it's just better to to run that instead of a perk that doesn't do anything. So, um, which we managed to get about maybe two uses out of the, this perk, but it's only reliant on where the lockers spawn, so that kind of dampens the fun of it a little bit, because you don't really get to actually utilize the uh, the perk that much. Now, as you can see here, we're trying to at least get a down on this clown first. Um, and the idea would be, you know, get the, get the down, start to leverage the game to our side any way we can, usually. Now, the one great thing about Doctor is that you do end up getting a lot of pallets for free, like a lot faster than normal. And I would say that I was overusing my power just a little bit. And of course, because we are actually going against a four-man squad, you're going to have somebody already posted up for a blind for whatever reason. So we just continue to follow through with them. Now, as you're going to slowly see, you know, or maybe not even slowly, but, you know, you're going to see that it's not just, like, just a, a coincidence that this clown was there. Because we, we started to slowly realize that this is definitely a four-man squad thinking they're going to uh, give the killer a bad time. Now, as we go here to activate our static blast, we're just trying to take a look around. That's when four of the people then activates. He tries to fly in there, so that already tells you everything you need to know off of just those two moves alone. Now, we can, you can't slug him. You can't even pick him up. Because you keep in mind that the, the survivor mains are going to be, uh, you know, screeching in the comments about it. Oh, if you don't like these perks, then, why, then don't slug. Then, but if you slug, you, they get four of the people. If you pick up, you get blinded. So, can't, we, we can't we really just are at a lose-lose situation here. You can't really, <laughs> can't really do much. So, we go ahead and get the down. Um, I attempted to try to pick up facing the wall, and they gave me the prompt to kick the wall down. So, that was uh, unfortunate. So, I had to kind of keep an eye out, like, just in case somebody was around. Um, it seems like it was them. They do also have head on, so that already marks about, what, three different things that they have? They already have four of the people, buckle up. And they also have a uh, background player with flashlights, and they also have head on. So it's like, sheesh, like, they, they have every, every perk under the sun. Now, what we're trying to do here is obviously uh, at least get one hook in. We already lost a gen, so you already know that there's going to be at least one gen jockey, with, as, as, as it always is with bully squads. I am, you know, obviously I'm no stranger to this um, as a killer main. Um, but uh, either way, you know what I'm saying, if you're familiar with this channel, you know we make them pay. So it's really uh, no question what, what, the end, what the result's going to be. But it's, it's all about the journey, right? So we, we're here, we're trying to um, at least utilize the uh, static blast a little bit too much, I would say. I'm not uh, accurately using the static glass correctly. Now you're gonna see once again for the people. So, I mean, we're like anytime you get a, a single down, it really doesn't matter. So I decided, let me at least while they're all here, let me at least apply more madness um, and try to go after somebody who's already injured um, to try to at least apply a little bit more pressure next to where the gens are possibly at. Now here was a bit of a misplay. Um, because I, as I uh, as I did more research on how to play Doctor, I didn't realize that the Shack Pallet being down was actually quite advantageous as a Doctor player, um, which was uh, a bit of a misplay. I didn't realize that until until uh, I actually did more research, and I was like, oh man, like I, I could have definitely played that a lot better. Um, which because I didn't realize that if you just static glass and vault through the window, I mean they don't they don't really give them a lot of options um, and in terms of escaping the Shack. So Shack would actually be one of my one of like kind of. The, is the reverse of whatever which we're used to, which Shack being one of the like the most survivor sided areas now becomes your sided area, like the killer sided area, and it's really cool. Um, that's one thing about Doctor I will I will appreciate. And uh, it's a shame that I didn't realize that at the time because if I did, it probably would have made the match even easier. So we activate Static Blast again, we try to utilize uh, utilize that for more information, uh, we try to go after somebody else who's trying to uh, play the game pretty chill, like we weren't really trying to uh, to sweat that much, 
Um, trying to activate the shock therapy just to kind of gauge where he possibly could have ran off to. But we don't really focus on him too much um, because we then go around to kick this gen. So at the time, you know, when I, and the thing is, it's like another mistake on my part. When I see, when like, especially when you see lobbies like these, you, you have to go, um, you know, I, I would say you have to utilize everything to make sure that they lose because they're, they're specifically coming in here um, into lobbies with bad intentions. Like they're coming in there specifically to give the killers a bad time. To specifically get killers frustrated, so you don't once you have to utilize the strategies. There's no oh I feel bad for them nonsense when it comes down to lobbies like these. There's no reason to. Just keep in mind the intention is always there to specifically have fun at your expense. So what you do is you have fun at their expense. You specifically will utilize every strategy that I that I, that I utilize in my videos. You know, um, especially. Now, as you can see, once again, now there's background players. So let's let's really take a tally, right? We have um, for the people buckle up. Then there's also flashlights and also background player. Um, so um, getting downs is uh, pretty much just you know gets deleted with, the, with with two to three buttons, you know, and an item. So that, isn't that cool? Um, crazy, crazy, crazy. But survivors will defend the, to to oh, the, they'll they'll die on that hill. You know what I'm saying? Defending this nonsense when. As you can see, we go through all the trouble of downing them just for it to take a single second for them to be standing again with endurance. And then you have to waste even more time waiting out the endurance and then follow them again for then somebody else to come in and then use for the people as well and rinse repeat. But the survivor remains will say, oh, well, what are you talking about? That means people are injured. I'm like, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> like, that really doesn't. Um, because as I've said, flashlights, background player, like, they're, they're just gonna, they're just gonna freely uh, get the save. So. And mind you, if they had flashbangs, it would it would have pretty much been a complete uh, nightmare, right? Because you can't even counter flashbangs. Like you can they, you can face a wall and it blinds you from behind. So it's like <laughs> it's like yo, like there's not really a lot you can do there. Now we were at least uh, trying to get the uh, down there. Um, I was just mis I was just like really misplaying it, but I was trying to at least apply as much madness as possible to make it a little bit more difficult. So we know that they're splitting up on gens. We need to go ahead and go after the people that are injured. So we figure we at least go after, you know, I would figure we go after the Steve, right? That would be the best play. Um, we do do that, I utilize the mind game. It doesn't seem like they actually know how to loop though, because anytime they're near a pallet, it's just slam down, and anytime they're near, you know, anything, they just kind of fly off. Now, thankfully, due to the, the base hit, like, you know, red stain that we can see, it immediately shows us where he's hiding, and then we just go ahead and pull him right out with Iron Maiden. So once again, Iron Maiden value. Now, it would have been better if I had Ultimate Weapon at the time, but... Um, we were just trying to do some testing, and this was the first match we had gotten with the, with the build. Um, we were trying to utilize something a little bit different, so you can see, once again, uh, the clown is running around with a flashlight in his hand, just waiting. Um, I'm not going to chase him, because right at this moment is when I realized, like, yeah, I'm going to have to buckle down and actually start to try here. Because I was really just trying to chill, just trying to test the build, you know, get better with Doctor, but no, they, they came in here, like I've said, with bad intentions, right? They came in here to make sure the killer has a bad time. So this is why you then utilize your strategies. And, and this is the way you have to play at all, pretty much, at least at all, I would say, a majority of the time, um, unless you specifically don't care about losing, which I wouldn't, I wouldn't assume anybody really, really doesn't. I figured that they would still have a bad time even if they want to play fun. Because of, like, uh, because of survivors like these. Um, but either way, we're utilizing our power here. Um, she, she, <laughs> I think she was really trying to get the save somehow, but I realized, like, yo, I can use my, my shock therapy to just, like, constantly keep them in madness, constantly keep them uh, unable to save so we can buy ourselves a second state, which we just did. We get a free hit on her as well just to make sure everybody's injured, and then we go ahead and hit him as well, just in case of off the record, because you never know. They Like, if there's one second chance, there's going to be multiple. So that's why I was like, let me at least knock off the endurance now so that just in case, like, just in case there's some kind of off the record play, or something like that, and then we start kicking down some walls to make it a little bit easier uh, to go around the map. Now, we're once again going to activate our static blast to apply more madness, and then we continue to go after the Steve here that we know is on death hook. Because because if we get that one person out of the game, it completely shifts the game to our side, which we exactly just knock him down here, and then we immediately. And here's the fun part: we pull out the Mori, <laughs> rub our hands together, and shock this clown <laughs> into oblivion. And make sure we can take a little look at our results. Oh yeah. <laughs> You'll love to see it. And we can also reward ourselves with a local lift as well. It's pretty cool. So now, 
we got one eliminated there's still three gens to go now we already know we're going in in full force and this is the type of thing that you know i i do like i would say it's a bit of uh something that i kind of have trouble with is that i forget that uh, you know the level i uh, unfortunately the level i play at i have to just kind of utilize the strategies every game and um I have to do what I have to do. So what I try to do here is I try to stay within proximity of this generator. <clears throat> we activate static blast because I realize like this gen needs to regress. Like I need, I cannot lose another gen at this rate when we have two to go, and there's still three people alive. So I was like, I need to stay near this gen, make sure I kick it um, because it's pretty far away. It's pretty out there, away from the three gens over there. So I figured that they eat, that they uh, may not, you know, focus on that generator. We could just switch over to a different one. Which this one barely had, like, as a, almost halfway, so we at least have a little bit of time. We're gonna use the shock therapy there because he tries to dodge it. Doesn't really matter, but I over, I under, uh, <laughs> I kind of overestimated how far the lunge really would go. And uh, that is just a thing that happens with uh, when you do end up playing new killers. Is that you kind of uh, are used to a certain animation, and uh, and it feels like you're like a certain distance. So like at least for me, it kind of throws me off if I'm playing a little bit of a new killer. And that uh, the animation feels a little bit, uh, a little bit slow, or a little bit short. Now we're putting them by the gen that we want to defend. We also see with the madness that there are, they are on the other gen over there. Um, they actually blow up this gen, so we're gonna go activate static blast to see if anybody else is around and give that a kick as well. As you can see, gen speed is very, very, very easy to to do. <laughs> as you can see, it's very fast. So what we try to do here is just also stay within proximity. Um, and just try to pressure it, just make sure that they like run off, you know what I'm saying? Just, just stay, just, just to keep them distracted so they keep running back and forth to the gen. Um, so they think that they're somehow distracting me or something. Um, but then I realized, like, at least if I can um, take a look over here and see what, see what the vibes are, we can at least get a hit on one. And then they can't really save without trading, and then the other one will have to go for the save as well. So what we do is, we at least try to, to apply a little bit more madness here and there. Um, so that's a little more difficult. We, do, we also are able to cancel that window. They start panicking. We then utilize that. We activate shock therapy again. They try to dodge it. We activate it again to cancel it. And we give, we give them a knockdown. To completely make sure that this guy gets out of the game entirely. And we put the, uh, the next one on the hook as well. Right next to the pretty much the area that we want to defend. Um, and oh, uh, like pretty much obliterating the team at this point, right? Like now we got another one on second state here. Um, the uh, the other gen over here regressing. We can go ahead and, and start to activate the static blast over here um, and see what we do. And it seems like this gen is also kind of going. So there was like at least three different gens that just magically had tons of progress. Um, and we also see with the madness, like there goes more information for us. So. Like in the words of Thanos, maybe I judged you too harshly. I thought Doctor maybe was a lot more like more low tier than I had realized. But then um, it really it really makes you think because I mean a lot of killers that I think are low tier and people um, will say are low tier I think are pretty good or they think are really fun um, like Freddy or Ghostface or even Myers. But then I realized like it really hits you. You go damn like it really was just I didn't understand the, like the character. I didn't understand how the power worked. So maybe I judged Doctor too harshly <laughs> because uh, I just didn't understand how his power worked correctly. Like I thought, I thought I understood. Like okay, you shoot your, or I guess you launch your, your uh, therapy out to cancel their their uh, their ability to use the pallet. But I didn't realize that the timing had to be sort of like sparing. Like you just kind of had to use it um, here and there. Like you don't get to spam it because you'd slow down too much. Um, but rather you use it here and there to, to, to be able to buy yourself some distance. Now from here, uh, we figure that the hatch isn't really spawning anywhere that we really are like sort of aware of, I guess. Like I'm trying to activate the shock therapy to get them to go that way, but for some reason behavior gives them the hatch as usual. We once again are spamming R1 and it's not even closing or picking up, but they're magically leaving. So that's, once again, that's behavior for you, <laughs> as usual. Um, and let's go ahead and take a pause and we're going to look at what the builds were. So it seems here we had Deliverance, Distortion, Adrenaline. I think that's probably either Kindred or Deja Vu. We got For the People, Buckle Up, uh, and Background Player with the Flashlight as well. And another Adrenaline, Lightweight. 
live. So that so that Michaela is definitely like the Michaelas are definitely the weaklings. They're running uh, stealth perks and and syringe and I the other ones running a syringe and stuff like that. It seems like they must be very uh, yeah. Because like look, the Michaelas running all stealth. The other ones running mostly stealth. Like they it seems like they're the weaklings. They're probably not very good at looping. And then the other one had a flashbang and also head on parental guidance, <clears throat> quick and quiet. They had everything. Um, but surprisingly, it was just the two of them. But it's really interesting that the P100s are the ones that are the weaklings. I find that very funny. <clears throat> but these are the kind of lobbies you're going to end up getting, man. This is why I constantly tell you guys, play how you want. Because they're coming into lobbies like this with these kinds of builds. And, and they, they're coming in with bad faith, right? They're coming in there to make sure you have a bad time. So why should you then cater to that? Like, why should you cater to that? They, they don't care about your fun, because if they did, they wouldn't run this stuff. I keep saying this. So let's move on to the next one. So here we are with playing some Pharaoh, Eddie, or otherwise Doctor on my one of my favorite maps in the game. And we're using the updated Iron Maiden build that I actually ran on the, uh, on the uh, Stranger Eddie, if you guys... Are familiar with the Death Slinger skin that is on the channel for you guys if you want to see that as well. Definitely one of my favorite uh, cosmetics from the Iron Maiden event or a collaboration or whatever you prefer. Um, with that being said, I definitely can see, you know, after like while watching my own game back, right, just for you guys so we can kind of see um, where it could have improved. I, there's a lot of areas with Doctor I could have improved on 100%. Um, definitely going to say number one, the add-ons. They, the we, <laughs> it, it turns out that it would like the better add-ons would be more so like shock therapy range, and then also running uh, detonation delay. I had ran the two green and yellow like, detonation delay add-ons, um, which only equates to the, about the same amount as the purple version, which essentially basically means I'm running with one add-on, which is still not very good. Now. On the flip side, I would say the build definitely works for Doctor. You do get a lot of free information, and if you take into account the Static Blast, you're actually getting two forms of, of uh, information um, every about minute, I believe. If it does take about a minute for the Static Blast to recharge, and it takes about 30 seconds for Ultimate Weapon to, re to, to go off of cooldown, um, I believe you'll kind of get both of them around the same time um, off of cooldown, which is pretty good. So you'll be able to utilize both to give you extra information if you definitely need it. Which, um, with this match in particular, we definitely did because they were running a boon for Shadow Step. And, and that's also probably why I lost track of where the survivor went. Um, because I could have sworn they were still in the tile and then the, the, the scratch marks disappeared. So I was so that definitely was quite confusing. Um, I didn't really realize it until I think about this portion of the video where they dropped the... Uh, God Palette, and then I realized that there, there's a boon in play. Because I thought it was a little bit strange that I go up the stairs, there's no scratch marks, there's nothing, it's blank. And they're just gone. And I was. <laughs> and it was really hard to kind of guess. I had figured maybe they'd go for the gen, that would be the, the, best, uh, the best play. But obviously, kick it, and then we go back down uh, to find where the boon is after activating Ultimate Weapon to give us that information that we need to figure out where uh, they possibly could be on the map. We take out the boon. And then we do that, and it'll give us more information now. <laughs> so with that being said, I definitely, I definitely am not the best doctor as of yet, um, because I definitely needed more experience and more research to understand how to how to play them optimally. Um, and this is truly no exception, um, because we're looking at the uh, I'm looking at the gameplay, you're looking at the gameplay, and I'm definitely seeing like some smart things I did. Like we we definitely use the static uh, ther the uh, shock therapy on the generator. To try to apply a little bit more madness in the meantime, and then we also just go ahead and uh, kick the gen. So we then try to uh, preemptively like drop the therapy down um, while they were kind of uh, going over there, but it seemed like they just kind of dropped it and ran off. So it seems like they, uh, their, I guess their quote unquote solution for the uh, doctor's power is to slam it down every time. But you then just get a free hit. Now, one of my favorite things about about Doc is that you kind of have like this sort of almost dark devotion kind of like almost undetectable kind of thing going where they're like almost oblivious but not really like almost undetectable but not really um, because madness will constantly play the music whether you're there or not 
which is kind of interesting. Um, I like that quite a bit, actually, about, about this character. It's almost like you're a stealth killer without really being a stealth killer. So you don't really have to rely on, um, on the, uh, on your power, like, just not being available or your power only being useful in certain situations yeah. and making you stealthy. Like, it's like, this is, like, almost a brute force mm. stealth. It's, it's, it's truly what they, what it's called is, like, madness, right? Like, they just don't know where you are, you don't know what's real. Um, which is one of my favorite things about Freddy as well. Um... So it is really cool to see that, uh, you know, that element. So I, I might have to add the Doctor to the roster, to the list of mains that I do play on this game, which is quite a, a, good, a good amount of killers. Um, now, as you're going to see, they're trying to get a body block and do all of this nonsense. I, I really don't see why I should be trying to chase somebody else when there's multiple gens being progressed at rapid speed and I'm supposed to just let that slide. I don't think that's how it works, you know, we, we, I have to keep up with the same pace as them, right? I mean, they want to they want to rush their objectives, or so should I, right? So that's why I'm going to rush out my objective. I'm going to make sure I get Jake out of the game as soon as possible, right? That is the uh, the, uh, the ideal situation, right? Because they chose, keep in mind, they chose to uh, rush out the gen. So I'm going to rush out my kill. Um, with that, which, I mean, I was going to do it anyway, but, you know, <laughs> we just, we're just... Uh, I'm just giving it a reason when there is none. So you see them all the way in the, at the end of the hall. Really doesn't matter. Um, we're, we're pretty much in a solid position. We have lockers here as well, just to kind of give us that information with ultimate weapon. Doesn't seem like they're on the generator. We just activate ultimate weapon again to give us uh, some more info, depending on if they're within the range here. Because it seems like they're like we we only have about the two hook. Um, we also want to step on that boon. But we only have the two hooks, so it would be, I, be I, we're at three gens, we need to get a kill as soon as possible. That is pretty much going to be the, the main thing that I always recommend in every video. By the time it's three gens, it should be somebody dead. It just ha that's just how it has to be. Um, because you, you just need to. If you don't, <laughs> the game is not going to really go the way you want it to. So we go ahead and activate the blast there. Unfortunately, we were a little bit too slow. But we can pretty much go after just Jake again. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna try to body block and try to oh no don't do that no no you can't you can't kill him. I'm like bro come on <laughs> come on now you know so we do get the hit there because we quite literally can't pass otherwise. But either way we can we can just continue to follow him. You know it's really interesting man. They they, they it's really interesting the dynamics man. They 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 rush out the the gens but if you rush out to kill there's a problem right. It's crazy. So thankfully we were able to use our, our blast there. For some reason I didn't get the uh, the M1, but we ended up getting it a little bit later. But it's completely fine. That yeah, is cool. We can just get Jake out of the game. As you can see, we're already at two yeah. generators. <laughs> Super fast, man. Super quick. So that's why we had to move quickly as well. We got somebody out of the game at least by two gens. We're a little bit late, but that's all right. Um, and ideally we could just start to um, start trading out some people here and there. We see where they are, so what we're going to do is activate Static Blast, or raising up the madness again, um, as much as we can. And uh, we're down to about two gens. Deadlock is blocking that gen, so I figured they might be down the stairs, but it doesn't seem like... It seems like they are, actually. They kind of have some old scratch marks, but they're going to try to push out the gen as much as they can, right? So this one stayed injured for some reason. I guess they were uh, being cocky or something like that. They thought they could stay alive, or maybe they were abusing resilience. Uh, to try to uh, get the most amount of uh, the most amount of uh, repair speed, so we just hook them right next to the generator, and we pretty much just defend the area. We don't really have any reason not to. Um, they, they're gonna have to start a brand new generator, um, and we're just kind of taking a look around. We know where the lockers are, so we, once the ultimate weapon is recharged, we'll be able to just use that, give us some more information. We actually checked down the stairs because we did hear some footsteps. Um, but otherwise, we're pretty much in a solid position. We're pretty much right at the, at the right range. We have the um, static blast is almost charged. Um, we got the gen regressing. We're in a great position. So we activate blast again just to see if anyone's close. Doesn't seem like it. Just staying as far away as possible to try to make sure we can, they can get the anti-camp mechanic to kick in. I'm really not afraid of it. Um, and it seems like they're actually trying to go for a save. So we actually get the free M1 there. Um, and then they end up running away. So that's my perfect opportunity to, uh, to apply a little bit more madness on them. And then we just try to get the down and start hooking them. To get Dwight off of the gen, whichever one he's on. Um, for some reason, I didn't end up getting the swing there. I don't know what happened there. But we do, uh, 
We do end up getting the Fang into second state because Dwight's taking his sweet time to actually get the save. Um, they do end up knocking out a generator. But because he's busy worrying about the gens instead of his own teammate, that obviously will give me the opportunity to give Kate a hook and then go after the, the Fung, Fang, Fungus, whatever the hell her damn name is. And we could take her out of the game as well. Pretty much guaranteeing at least another kill. It wasted time healing. So that gives us time to go right back over. This was like pointing, trying to trying to lead me away. I really have no reason. As long as this gen is regressing, I'm in a solid position. She's trying to run out of range, trying to run into the locker, but that's exactly uh, what we needed. And I figure I'm gonna stand right here because I know that they're gonna be exposed and they come out of the locker, or they might have decisive strikes. So I didn't want to I didn't want to um, immediately pull out because we know survivors like these that that. Um, that are running around in the, in, and kind of play in this kind of fashion, you know that it's going to probably be, be decisive, right? So we decided to at least wait it out just long enough, and then we just immediately get him out of the game um, with our Iron Maiden. And uh, then that'll then push the Dwight to have to go for the save now, because he doesn't want his teammates to, uh, to get to second state, I would assume. So I figured here we at least uh, give this another kick, just so it continues to progress in the meantime, by the time they even come back. Um, which we now have ultimate weapon showing us where they are. We continue to uh, try to apply a little bit more madness if possible. It seems like they might try to... It, we actually heard them here drop down. So I was trying to activate therapy through the wall real quick just for the extra sauce. And then we obviously knocked them down as well. We placed them on a hook and then we can try to go ahead and find where the Dwight went. Um, but ideally we put them on a hook over here. Now they didn't reach second state so they're not dead. But they will... Um, it will apply a little bit of extra pressure, then we go near where the gen was, try to activate Blast again, we see he's right back on the gen, instead of, instead of, instead of trying to help his teammates. So we then give him a free, uh, free hit there, he's going to start rotating back toward where the person got unhooked, most likely to try to pull them off and try to, and try to um, you know, waste more of my own time, which is fine. They gave up, so then that's when we start activating our therapy, keeping them kind of locked in here, um, as you can see. We, we activate the Blast there. Well, not the blast, but the therapy. You know. We already get rid of the pallet, and then we just knock his goofy ass down and take him out of the game. And this was very satisfying. It was very satisfying getting this, uh, getting this 4K, um, because uh, you know, at, like with, with matches like these, you gotta lock in, you gotta buckle down, and make sure that you go, um, you know, you use everything you can to get this win because they, they, they're gonna. You know, <laughs> they're gonna basically win without doing anything remotely skillful or intelligent. You want to prevent that. You know, you want to show them who's the the better player, <laughs> right? Um, because ultimately, they didn't really loop well. They didn't really utilize anything. You know, any strategies. They just rushed out the gens. That's all they did. So you go, you show them how it's done. With Pharaoh Eddie, you love to see it. So then we go ahead and uh, take a quick look at the builds, which was all right. Let's move on to the next one. So now we're in the underground complex, which is Hawkins, you know, the Stranger Things map, if you guys are unaware. Um, this is essentially the game, Gideon Mead Plant, basically 2.0, uh, with in terms of how many uh, pallets are available for the survivors, which is completely fine um, with a, a, you know, a killer like this that can kind of prevent a lot of the uh, pallets going down. So right here we're just using that because we know this map pretty well that we have to try to activate our, our shock therapy a little bit a little bit more often than we probably should mainly because of the fact that the uh that there's a lot of pallets so as you can see there's two side by side we at least got one of them out of the way um and we're just trying to activate more therapy to get the madness up really um i'm kind of overdoing it a little bit i will admit but uh, I would definitely say we at least were able to, um, which it took a while to get the hit, which is not, it's not ideal. Um, he's running toward an area that is uh, blocked, so like, you know, with the corrupt, so I figure I'll at least just follow him because I might be able to get the down, um, which normally I wouldn't do, but he is in Madness 3 and uh, he is injured, so I figured even, whatever he decides to do, it really pretty much won't lead to anything. Um, and there's also another gen here that we are also kind of simultaneously in proximity of, so, you know, it was, it was alright. It wasn't, like, a complete misplay. It was, uh, it was just kind of we're doing what we have to do. Now, the other one's just running up there. I don't know why they're clicking and losing their minds, but, hey, we're just, uh, getting it down. Keeping an eye out in case they want to come for a save, so that's why we use our blast. Keep an eye on where they are, and then we can go ahead and get the pick up here. Now, we know in that span of time, and especially because of the, the, two, uh, the two yells there, you know, that they were both... 
uh, simultaneously put, pushing the gen at the same time, so you already know what kind of uh, lobby we're gonna get, in, you know, we're getting into um, with something like that. So we're using our blast there, um, our shock therapy. I guess he thinks that if he's above the ground, it's magically gonna like you know, prevent uh, <laughs> prevent the blast from like the uh, therapy from landing. It doesn't work that way. So we were able to at least uh, prevent him from dropping that pallet and got a free hit out of it. Now, I had figured the best play is to go for Felix again, because that is the best way to get the most amount of pressure. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Especially because, you know, keep in mind that we are playing essentially an M1 killer. So we do have to utilize every strategy we possibly can. Now, thankfully, because of Madness 3, we're also going to see the red stain on them. But they're also not going to really know that we're there. Um, so that does help out quite a bit. Now, the gen next to me was also going, but I figured I need to get this down a lot faster than I need to stop that gen. Because the, the faster we get him out of the game, it'll be a lot easier to to uh, to get the kill. Which, of course, he's just going back around, slamming every pallet down, like, panicking, and then he just goes down anyway. So we just take him out completely. Um, putting him out again on another hook. Now, uh, for some of these pallets, I try... Uh, I try to break them mainly because of the fact that they had like live exists, so I don't want really want them to be flying over the pallet and getting another gigantic speed boost. But I'll leave like one of them, and then we use the ultimate weapon real quick to show to try to get some more information. Keep an eye out, and we just get rid of some more pallets. Now, if I was being like super uh, optimal, and I, and if I was also more experienced with Doctor, I'd probably be more confident leaving those particular pallets on the ground. Um, like, like leaving them down rather because of the fact the way my ability operates but at the time I was still sort of learning the character um, trying to give it a chance and really trying to see where the power lies really now as you're gonna see there's one injured rolling in which is hilarious because the ones that are are the healthiest should be the ones flying in which we then activate our uh, shock therapy to try to cancel their ability to even go for a save which is what we do here. We're gonna we're gonna prevent them from actually getting any saves, and completely cancel out their their any way for them to get the save and completely eliminate them at the three gen mark. Now here is where I would say I'm definitely improving with my ability. As you can see, the gens are flying. So can you imagine if I was going around like trying to trade hooks and and play fairly? I mean, we're, we would have lost the game. Um, now as you can as you're gonna see, this arena is just kind of running around in circles, not really sure what the hell she's doing, but. We just focus on the uh, the Allen because you know he's already injured, and he seems like he's pretty scared. So we try to go after him. We also get some more information. We actually oh I meant to like lunge there. Damn, that was a, I don't know what happened there. I tried to lunge, but it ended up just swinging at the wall. Uh, that's unfortunate, but it's all right because we continue to go after her. And there's a hook right next to us, so no matter where she goes, she goes down. So that's pretty cool. So then we also notice this generator is uh, kind of going. So we're going to use our static blast just to see where everyone else is, and then we give this a kick. So it's a little bit weird that the gen at the top of the building was 99, but we're, we're not really too worried about it. I figure that we can at least get the hook going, um, and then we can try to find where Alan is, or maybe, or, and uh, just start, start getting more hooks out. So they did end up blowing up the gen. We also see the madness is showing us where he, where he is, the little hallucinations. So... We then go over there to go find where Alan is. Now there he goes. We're gonna continue to follow him. And there's a pallet there. We uh, we couldn't go for the hit there per se, but we at least got a little bit more shock there beyond him um, to try to prevent the pallet drop uh, from being dropped there. So we're trying to go for a little bit of a mind game. We do actually get the M1 for once, so that's pretty good. And then we're then able to hook them. And this is just pretty much what it spirals into. Because you're able to eliminate that person at the right time. And not any la any later than that. Right? You know, just right before it. Like, right at that 3 gen point is usually the right time. If they're not, if they're dead by then, you pretty much will guarantee a win at that point. You also use Static Blast because you know that this one knew about the gen. So we want to be able to at least uh, try to stop them from trying to finish it as, as much as we can. We do actually take the time out to kick it again. Because I think this may be the only survivor that actually remembers or even knows that that gen is even going. So that we need as much slowdown as we possibly can get. So, um, decent play on my part. I think I could have done it just a little bit better. Um, but either way, we, we uh, they ended up getting the vault regardless. I could have gotten the play because 
Um, because I had the right idea. I used the therapy right there, but then I just didn't actually commit to the side. So that was a, a misplay. Um, but I could have done that a lot better. Now, uh, we're just gonna keeping an eye out, just keeping aware here. It seems like they're just gonna go around and drop every pallet and just kind of panic. So, um, but thankfully it was just an easy, easy knockdown. Very simple. And then we just pick them up. Put them on the hook again. That'll be like the second save for them as well. So we're doing all right. He pretty much went from uh, the gens flying to the gens not even being touched at this point, pretty much, um, give or take. Now we try to move over to where the gens kind of are. They do end up knocking out another gen, but Deadlock blocks the one upstairs. So we know at least that one is the main one that actually has progress. Um, we see once again with the yelling and also the uh, so overall the ability. We actually know where everybody's at. Um, but that alone and that's really great like have them having madness and showing the red stain on them and not us really does help out quite a bit um, And as you can see here, but now we're just gonna like she's trying to body block for him trying to use the base kit BT as if I'm not gonna go after her So that's exactly what we do. We do activate a little bit more shock therapy trying to prevent them from uh, From vaulting, but it actually kind of worked out there because the <laughs> we still got them out of the game um, Which is ideal really interesting you know it really it's really interesting how they think i'm not gonna go after them when they're going in for a base kid bt block like body block like come on now <laughs> you're just giving me what i need now <laughs> i just wanted you out of the game so that works out um we i figured that uh maybe they're probably upstairs working on the generator potentially or they could be somewhere else um which was which would be best if we could try to try to find a locker to give us that info but we actually find the other guy here so um which a little bit out of range there that was a misplay now they end up do knocking they end up knocking out the gen because we haven't seen Alan in a while, so you know he's probably just hiding somewhere doing the gen. Um, now thankfully because they don't have balance, they do stagger here, which means we just get the free down. And I figured why not? There's a locker right here. Let's go ahead and use ultimate weapon to give us that information that we need. Um, so that we can then make our way out around and find where he is. Just find where he is and get our 4k. Um, definitely a solid play on my part. So we're just walking around, you know, we still have a good amount of time until we actually see him right there. He's still injured, so not like there's not much he can do. And uh, we activate Blast as well, just to get his madness up too. Um, and also show us where he possibly ran off to. We, we, we also knew he was going to double back. Um, just because of the way he, like, he's like, oh, I saw him, I'm gonna go the other way. They, like, you already know that, they, they tend to panic. Um, there is a pallet there, so we just know that he's going to try to pre-drop it. He pretty much doesn't make anything else, so just knock him down and we get him out of the game and get our glyph. So, pretty good stuff. I would say that, like, at least this match, I think I did a, a little bit better. Um, but with the newfound knowledge on how to play Doctor and what kind of works, I would say with Doctor, I definitely will say that I, like, in um, future gameplays for Doctor, I will say that I will come in with a lot better games, a lot better understanding the, the power um, because I just needed to do the research because I had missed, I missed, uh, I missed, uh, Judge the character, man. I really did. I honestly thought he was weak. But that's the, but that's the same mentality that people have about Ghostface and Freddy and Myers and whatnot. It's the same way. Even Pig, like some people who main Pig will say that that they're they're quite good. Um, at least for them. Um, and hey, like that, like that's more power to him, right? Like I, I, I who would have thought? You know, which you know, if you don't understand how something works, you're not going to be able to utilize its full strength, right? So it makes sense. That being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys learned something and maybe can, you know, uh, I don't know. Like maybe you, you may take something away from this video. Um, with that being said, uh, do all the YouTube things for me. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you in the, uh, in the next one. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one.